With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. What a win. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. We're down to our last couple of shows here. Not much has changed, though. As always, Tennessee Tech head coach Marcus Satterfield. As always, I'm your host, Dylan Lozano. Golden Eagles, last Saturday, they went into Nashville to take on Tennessee State. They came out with a 44-16 victory in the second-to-last game of the season. Coach, talk about offense, defense, special teams. It looked like your guys dominated all three facets of the game. Yeah, it was the uh, first game uh, since we, you know, started this thing that we actually lived up to our brand of, uh, you know, of our program, and it was really cool. I didn't know if we would get that this year or if it would be in year two, uh, but to to get that type of win where it was a physical, physical game that we took the fight to an opponent and came out uh, on top. That was uh, a really neat experience for us. It's just another notch. Uh, in our in our maturation process, and I think it's going to be huge, pay huge dividends for us moving forward. Well, I'd imagine that in a 44-16 victory, there'd be a fair amount of highlights to show. So yeah. you ready to take a yes. look at those? Yes, I am. But these are good highlights. All right. Well, let you or the man. Let's roll the film. Introducing these game highlights, and that is brought to you by Wendy's of Cookville. So Tennessee Tech, they're in Nashville. As we note, they have not won there at Hale Stadium since 1995. And, Coach, I know you guys are fired up to go into this game. No question. I'm glad I didn't know that stat. I had <laughs> no idea that stat existed or we'd have probably screwed it up. Golden Eagles, here is the toss right now. Tennessee State wins the toss. They elect to defer, so they're going to give the Golden Eagles a football. Not sure if that's the right decision because Tennessee Tech comes out swinging. Very first play from scrimmage, Coach, is to Yidi Thainrat. He takes it 18 yards, and you guys are in business. Yeah, I mean, the freshman Yidi Thainrat, two true freshman tight ends setting the point of attack. Miles Douglas playing really, really well. Number 78 there. The offensive line had another great day moving the line of scrimmage. Drive started on the 25-yard line of Tech. Now at the 25-yard line of Tennessee State, Dantes Bird, water run. He seems to catch everything. Not in right there, but he's down to the one, Coach. He was in. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. He was definitely in. Yep. Well, two plays later, no harm, no foul, because you know who is in? Yidi Thainrat. Touchdown for the freshman, his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Tennessee Tech leads it 7-0. And Miles Douglas right there had a phenomenal block on the pull uh, to create that hole to, for Yee to run and get his touchdown. So Miles is playing again, I said earlier, at a high, high level. Hope we can keep it up for one more week. Golden Eagle offense came out soaring. How about the Golden Eagle defense? Picked off the pass. A.J. Flemister from Ronald Butler almost had a chance to break it away. But nonetheless, Coach, that's a big turnover. That's huge because we had only created eight going into the game. And I challenged our guys last week. We had to get the ball out and to get one that early, really on top of the touchdown in the first drive really uh, you know, spring, springboarded us into a really good day. Tennessee Tech would go on a miss of field goal, snapped a string of eight straight by Nick Madonia. Don't worry, though, he'll be hurt later on. That was a 55-yard field goal by Lane Clark that was good. But right back come the Golden Eagles. Coach, it's Yeedy Thainrat, the longest play from scrimmage this season, 61 yards, and once again... Looks he like he in. might be in. 100% he was in, but that's okay. It gives us some chance to work on our low red zone offense, and uh, we ended up being okay. But Yeedy's doing this on one leg, which is amazing. I mean, uh, when he's fresh this time next year, he'll blow by that guy. It will never even be an issue. He had an incredible ball game. This is now the first play of the second quarter. Michael Birdsong from the three-yard line. He's going to throw right. No, he's going to throw left. No, he's going to run. No, what he is going to do. Yes, touchdown. Coach Matthew Leifight, he's an offensive lineman. He's a tight end making a touchdown catch. Yeah, with Carlin getting hurt, we had to find us another tight end. Matthew's a guy that we're trying to you know, get big enough to be a tackle. Uh, he played tight end in high school. He had a great game. He helped us win that game. He's so physical at the point of attack. And that's the same play Alex called to win the game against Eastern Kentucky. How about this play? Ensuing kickoff, Madonia onside recovery. Yeah, that's, you know, we had a, uh, a penalty like that against Jacksonville State, and we kicked off from the 50, and we kicked it through the end zone, and we gained about 20 yards of uh, field position. So I vowed to 
just onside kick it the next time we did it, and it worked out. We told you, you hear from Adonia later. How about a school record 57-yard field goal to give Tennessee Tech a 17-3 lead? Yeah, we were going to punt that, and they had 10 guys on the field, called timeout, and Tyree, Coach Foreman said, kick a field goal, and if their guy can make it, our guy can. I was like, all right, let's do it, and Nick made the 57-yarder with ease. Special teams with the onside kick recovery with the field goal after a three and out by Tennessee State. Here's more strong Golden Eagle special teams. Malik Hall fields the punt. Deontay Wilson with the big hit. Malik Hall just the kicker to beat. Cannot do it though. Nonetheless, it's still a great yeah, return. Yeah, he caught a lot. He got a hard time on Sunday <laughs> watching that tape with the coaches and the players getting all over him. You know, a punter getting him down. So that was a great play though. Great block by Deontay. Very next play, first play of this drive. We saw Yeedy Thainwright carrying the football. How about receiving the football? He is wide open. There's not a soul around him, and he's going to take it 29 yards down to the six-yard line with the Golden Eagles in business. Very next play, it's Dantes Burt. Hand off to him on the sweep. He can waltz into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech, and the Golden Eagles are cruising, leading 24-3. to Our kids came out with a lot of confidence. They had every opportunity in the world after that Tennessee uh, debacle to come out and lay in egg and they worked harder last week than they have this entire season they keep growing and uh, I think that says a lot for our program it says a lot for our senior leadership on the team uh, to go out and really take care of business like they did second play of the very next drive pedal to the metal as as running with the football Butler and look out Tim Collins the hit the fumble it is recovered by Josh Poplar so nice we'll show you twice that was awesome Tim was running by that tackle the whole night and just what you know he could have very easily had about five sacks but he had a great game to turn and run when the quarterback stepped in the pocket and to create the turnover. That's two turnovers in one half. Uh, our defense is living up to this point, everything we challenged them to do earlier in the week. So let's fast forward now. Two minutes to go in the first half. This is a third down and eight from the TSU 36. Let's watch Birdsong. Gets a big block from Douglas. Then one by there, Charles Mouton. He's zigging, he's zagging. All that, it's eight yards. It's a first down, though. And there's two more, Brady Bowes and, and Will Chapman there in front of him. The O-line, you know, again, playing at a, good, a high level for us. And there, the final play for the Golden Eagles, a 39-yard field goal, almost like an extra point after you get a 57-yarder. Oh, and, and that win was huge behind him. So, you know, Nick could just basically hit a pitching wedge every time he attempted a field goal and, and did it with a lot of accuracy. So I was, I was glad to see him get the 57-yarder, turns around, he, you know, he gets, the, well, he gets the bunt, and then he gets the 57-yarder, makes another field goal. So... He's punting every now and then, so he had a busy day. Yeah, the 39-yarder, and it makes it 27-3. What's the locker room like during the half? Uh, you know us. Uh, we went in there shock and awe. Uh, you know, our kids were excited, and they should have been, and there was a lot of energy, but there was a little bit uh, too much silliness going on like the game was over. So we challenged them uh, rather sternly and reminded them about that Eastern Illinois game that it still pains us today. And uh, we got their attention. We got a plan put in place. You know, remind them, don't look at the scoreboard. Take the fight to Tennessee State. Be physical. Play harder than them. And, you know, just leave nothing out on the field. You know, and do it for the seniors. And we challenge the seniors. We're not just playing for you. You're playing for your legacy. So solidify your legacy of how you want this thing to be moving forward. And they came out and responded really well. Well, that fired me up. So let's see. take a look at the third quarter right now. Tennessee Tech on top in the football game, 27-3. to Tennessee State, though, would put together a solid drive. They would move it into Golden Eagle territory. But there's your man, Tim Collins, once again, a sack on Ronald Butler, one of four Golden Eagle sacks in the football game. Tennessee State would end up kicking a field goal to make it 27-6. to Right back from the Golden Eagles, though. Wouldn't be a highlight package without a couple of catches to Dantes Burr. No question, and that was a great throw. He had to throw it before Dantes got out of his break. Phenomenal catch by Dantes right on the ground there. Very next play, Dantes Burr. That one went 16 yards. This one goes 13 yards. He would have nine catches. It ties what he did the previous week against Tennessee, and Dantes Burr going over a 100 yards receiving. It sets up another opportunity for Nick Madonia, and from 33 yards, it's up, it's good. Golden Eagles at this point, coach lead it 30 to 6. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a great drive, and you know, you can throw it. That was so easy to make those throws because of how we were running the football. Fourth quarter, it's now 30 to 9. Another Lane Clark field goal made it to that score. And Michael Birdsong, he has had so many runs this season. This one, the longest of the year. He takes it 32 yards. We've seen it, a habit of him with his ability to use his legs. 
once again. We've also seen a habit of him throwing the football to Dantes Bird. From the 30-yard line, a little bit of a play action, and then he fires a strike right there as Bird dived, touchdown, and the Golden Eagles are rolling, leading it 37-9. Yeah, it's good to see Mike. You know, he's those are designed runs, too, that he was making, not scrambling for his life, and then turn around and got a big personnel group, a run set. A nice play action uh, by him, good ball handling, and a great pass, great catch by Dantes, and then tremendous pass protection. And Dorian Carter really made that play coming off and uh, protected Mike on a, a run through linebacker there right when he let go of the ball. Ronald Butler would connect with Steven Newbold for touchdown pass, making the score 37-16. You just mentioned Dorian Carter. We show a 10-yard run. He was involved in the offense throughout the game. Yeah, he was involved early, and he's a kid that is doing everything he can to do to get on the field. And... Uh, you know, he hadn't got a lot of playing time, but he's practiced at an extremely high level the last two weeks, and now you're seeing it on the game field. First play of the drive. This is the last play of the drive. Fourth down and 10. It's Birdsong, 14 yards into the end zone. He ended with 77 yards on the ground. And Coach Cherry on top, icing on the cake, whatever you want to call it. At this point, it's 44-16. Oh, that was a good feeling right there. You know, we weren't going to kick a field goal. That's kind of an ethical thing you do in coaching. Like, you give them a chance to stop you. It's fourth and 10. And great execution by Mike and the offensive line. And uh, it was good for him to end the night with a touchdown. Tennessee Tech, as we take a look at the final stats for this game, another great performance by Michael Birdsong. Of course, Dante's Bird with the nine catch, 112 yard performance. Third time he's gone over 100 yards receiving. But let's circle Yeedy Thane Rat. 164 rushing yards. That is the most since 2012 for a Golden Eagle when Darian Stone did it. Overall, Coach Tennessee Tech's 295 yards rushing was the most since the season opener back in 2013. You guys had so much success on the ground. Yeah, and it, they were real runs. They were grown man runs that we were handing the ball off in these you know NFL type formations. It wasn't tricks. So I was really pleased to see our again our offensive line to play as physical as they were. And Yidi, everybody's surprised. I'm not surprised with Yidi. Yidi could have done that all season if he would have had the holes that they're creating for him now. Got to imagine as we'll preview the matchup against Murray State a little bit later in the show, but there's a lot of momentum heading into that final game. I mean, 44-16. Uh, it's huge, and uh, we've got so much to play for uh, with a good Murray State coming in, uh, team coming in to finish possibly in the top three in the league. Uh, you know, that would be huge for a team like us that was picked second to last by everybody and uh, to go out on a win streak going into to the offseason recruiting. Well, let's see what Murray State did. Let's see what the rest of the Ohio Valley Conference did. Introducing the OVC scoreboard and standings that is brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. Murray State in a matchup against Jacksonville State. JSU would win it, as you see, 33-15. Was a 7-3 Gamecocks lead at the half. They would break it open. Junior Rock Thomas with a career high, 165 yards rushing and three touchdowns. And Jack State's defense limited the Racers to only 178 yards for the game. UT Martin with a win over SEMO. They wrap up their first unbeaten season at home since 1991. Junior Khalid Hagens earned his second straight OVC Defensive Player of the Week honor after recording eight tackles, two interceptions, and a forced fumble. Last score, Eastern Kentucky 67, Austin P 30. That ties a program record for the Colonels. Despite the loss, though, Austin P's Kento Williams established a new OVC record for all-purpose yards in a game with 399. So with those scores, as we take a look at the OVC standings, we're going to have a fun matchup atop Jacksonville State, UT Martin. That game will be played at Jacksonville State. But, Coach, right after that, Murray State, Tennessee Tech, a battle for third place. Yeah, I mean, we control our own uh, our own finish, our own destiny. I don't know if it's destiny, but our own finish. We can be 5-3 and three and be by ourselves, not share that with anybody. Or we can be 4-4 four and four and be amongst about four other teams, and we don't want that. We want to be different. Uh, you know, I've been telling people if UT Martin, which I think they can upset Jacksonville wins, we're going to win and we're going to claim second place, not third place. I so it. I think we can, you know, this is a great opportunity for our program and hopefully the fans will come out and support these kids. Cause I mean, if, if, if people actually knew what these kids have done this season and how they've responded to adversity and they just keep coming back and wanting to be the best they can be, uh, they would, they would definitely be out to support them. So hopefully we can get a good crowd and, and have a great game against Murray. Just underway here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. Lots of segments to get through right around the break, so don't go anywhere. Once again, on the Marcus Satterfield Show. Wherever, whenever, cheering for whoever. There's one place to go for free OBC sports. The OBC Digital Network.
back again on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. We just took you through those highlights. One of the names that stood out, Tim Collins. Let's learn more about him as we take you through the player profile. And that is brought to you by TQSports.com. My name is Timothy Collins. I'm a sophomore and I play defensive end. My family, I can just, uh, my mom, my mom, she's been in my life for forever. Uh, I got a stepdad who's um, just always been around and kind of motivated me and pushed me to become a better man each and every day. And I got my two little sisters who uh, I love and they motivate me to do what I do every day. The most influential person in my life will have to be uh, my high school coach, Reggie Tobor because he basically uh, went through the same process I'm going through now. And he overcame it and he made it to the NFL and he's successful in life. I first started playing football, really, I would say my senior year of high school. I mean, the reason I came to play at Tennessee Tech is because, actually I was on the official at University of Central Arkansas and I was torn between the two and I couldn't make up my mind. And that night I just prayed and I was like, God, you know what I'm saying, just give me an answer um, to help me decide on which school I want to go to attend. And I woke up the next morning and the only thing that was on my mind was Tennessee Tech, so I went with it. My involvement with the program has contributed to my academic success uh, in a major way. It's just given me more responsibility and um, really just held me accountable uh, off the football field and in life. Some personal goals I've set for myself this football season is to, uh, first of all, just be a better leader, be a better person. Um, uh, I wanted to finish, finish the season off with at least 10 sacks to uh, be All-American and All-Conference. Uh, my team as a whole is, is goofy, <laughs> fun, uh, dedicated, um, and committed to getting better each and every day. The teammate I look up uh, to the most is, is Ant, Anthony Akers um, because he's kind of like me in, in plenty of ways. He's committed. Uh, he, he dedicated um, to getting better each and every day. We work out a lot together um, outside of practice, and he's just an overall great person just to be around. The best advice I've, uh, I've received is from, from Coach Wright, my position coach. He, he told me that uh, don't work for right now, work for uh, the future, and I ran with that. Um, I see the team moving forward the rest of the season, um, uh, just getting better. And like each day, we just get better and better and better and better. You can't ask for nothing else but that. Um, my favorite memory this season um, is when my teammate, Zach, uh, he's, he's also a defensive end. He, uh, he got a sack, and that was his first sack. He's a senior, and that was my favorite. memory. Monster performance coach in the game Saturday against Tennessee State. And Tim Collins, I mean, he's having a great season. And like all of our leaders on our team, you know, we don't coach them on interviews. We just, we just trust that they say the right thing. But all he does is he deflects everything towards – other people, you know, his best memory is Zach making a sack because he respects Zach and what Zach does. And he likes Anthony Akers and looks up to him because they have the same um, moral compass and how they attack the day. Uh, you know, Tim Collins, it's a funny story. I, when I was at Temple, I went to Birmingham when UAB dropped football, like every other college coach, to see if there was anybody we wanted to get involved with to transfer. And I went to a couple of high schools. And that same day, I went to Restoration Academy, which was in the middle of nowhere. I saw Coach Torver and met with Tim. And I saw Austin Hicks that same day. So it's a small world and how things work out. But he is a special, special, special human being. Has an unbelievable story that hopefully through time we can tell. But uh, I love him so much. And, and he's going to be great moving forward in football and in life. Yeah, great player. And I just want to ask you real quick. Do you remember who we had last week for player profile? Putting you on the spot here. Josh Poplar? No, we actually had Nick Madonia. Nick Madonia, yes, yeah, that's 57 yard true, field true, yeah. goal, he yeah. has that game. I'm just saying. So maybe no expect big things from Tim Collins this if week. If he does better than he did the last game, then we'll be okay. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Well, Tim Collins, he plays defense. This next coach is involved with the defense as we take you into a Tennessee Tech practice with Mike Duff. That coach, Chris Polizzi, defensive backs coach. He's also the recruiting coordinator. So introducing Mike Duff, and that is brought to you by Pepsi. Mic check, one, two. Yeah, no F-bombs. And then as soon as you take a step out like that, then I reverse back out. Yeah, I got about one alligator, two alligator. Hit! Come on, come on, come on, bring your hips, Sip. Bring your hips. Hit! Come on, drive your hips, drive your hips. Come on, ah, hey, see how I lift my hips out of that, Brandon? 
I gotta bring my hips or else I got no power. Bring your hips, bring your hips. Bring your hips with violence, good. Don't gather, I'm right here. Boom, explode, explode, bring those hips. Don't, keep them here. Don't worry about him, he's in full armor. Boom, just like that, okay? Explode through the hip. Really explode that thing, DJ. Boom, okay? Hit! Strike with violence, there you go. Hit! Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. Get me one with laces, will you? Getting better at it, getting better at it. Thank you. Hit! Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. Hit! Good. Magic. Time it up so I can raise up and go. Hit! Scooch. Ah! Come here, what'd you do? First thing you did was this. Wide. Right here. Scooch, scooch, scooch. Stay in the framework so when he moves, I can go. If I'm already here and then I go take a step, right? That's where I keep my feet in the framework. Keep in the framework. Let's go. Boom. And you're trying to fight me, but you, there you go, there you go. I got to fight to get outside here and I win. Back up. You're outside, son. There's a thing called the neutral zone. Keep up. Push, pull, push, pull. That's a man and a boy. Bam, right here. Okay. Now I want to gain advantage. See, I'm leveraged. Good? You don't put your hands on me ever. Okay. Panny, will you fire that ball back there, please? Fire that thing. My grandmother snaps better than you. You're here for a reason, brother. Snap that thing. That's one thing. If people run at you on a football field, don't move. Which one's the most dangerous? The, 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 the first, yeah, the, the number you're gonna block the center. So the first guy that comes down the field, the most dangerous guy to you right now. If you got 12 people running at you with knives, which one are you gonna try to stop first? The third one? The first one. Ah! You gotta get out and get some depth. Just telling them. So you're right, but you're not right. You know what I mean? Stay up, stay up, stay up! You were going to step on my toe, bird. I know you were. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Ball's coming. Stay with him. Stay with him. There you go. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Good. I probably won't be able to do that on Saturday. Run with you, Coach. All right? So, uh, Coach, I love these mic'd up segments because it seems like every one of them has a shot of the coach screaming at one point or another. Another energetic guy, yeah, Coach Belize. And they all have their own quirky personalities and uh, what they bring to the team, and, and that's needed. I mean, we can't all be the same. And uh, Coach Polizzi, uh was at Western Carolina with Coach Quinn, our defensive coordinator. And uh, when Sean went, you know, was wanting to come here, he said, hey, I got another coach I want to bring with me. And explained, you know, this this guy. I thought it was a kid. I didn't realize it was a grown man <laughs> with a wife. And uh, Chris has been invaluable. Like all the, you know, the transfers and the recruiting and all the stuff we did this summer was a direct result of him. I I couldn't do it. Like I'm not good enough to do it. He's phenomenal at doing all the little details and working with our compliance and working with our academics to make sure kids are eligible and doing what they're supposed to do. So he's going to be. He's already a success. I think you know his future is very very bright. And again, like all of them, I hope we can keep him here. Uh, for a couple more years before they move on. But, uh, you know, he is, he is an invaluable resource, and his, his time is getting ready to pick up. It's recruiting time, and he's going to earn his money. Well, there you go for Coach Polizzi. It's his time coming up. What's also coming up for this show is going to be we're going to learn more about what else is going on in the world of Golden Eagle Athletics. We'll also preview the final opponent of the regular season. So don't go anywhere right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. What are you looking for? A place to belong? A path to a career? A way to make things better? Do you wonder what opportunity looks like? Explore your answers here. Change your world at Tennessee Tech University. Visit tntech.edu slash change. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Hey, Coach, last week you brought up big basketball guy. And I just I kind of wanted to ask you who your favorite player ever was. Pistol Pete Maravich. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite college, I mean, he was my favorite player, but as growing up, it was Bobby Hurley. I always wanted to be Bobby Hurley. I love Bobby Hurley. <laughs> Smacking the floor, playing defense, undersized guy. A uh, great facilitator, unbelievable mind, basketball IQ, which – you know, it proves now that he's he's a very successful coach at Arizona State. His brother, Dan, basketball coach, still at Seton Hall, is that right? Yeah, I think so. And uh, so I love the Hurleys. When I was up at Temple, I got to go watch uh, their dad coach a game against Camden High School, and that was phenomenal to see, you know, Mr. Hurley, as I would call him, coach and see the discipline they play with. So, uh, yeah, I'm 
kind of got a little crush on the Hurley family. Well, there you go. And he's talking a little bit about basketball. You know who else can talk about basketball? Tennessee Tech Edition is Golden Eagle Athletic Director Mark Wilson. He brings you the Golden Eagle update. That's brought to you by the Tech Athletics Twitter at TTU Golden Eagles. The NCAA graduation success rate data is in, and Tennessee Tech increased two points to an 83. Men's golf, men's tennis scored perfect 100s, leading the Ohio Valley Conference. The Golden Eagle football team tied for the highest uh, GSR in the OVC as well. The Golden Eagle volleyball team concluded their season with two tough losses to Jacksonville State and to Southeast Missouri. Head coach Kim Roseman got her first win as the Golden Eagle women's basketball coach. They lost their opener to Wright State, 65-54. to Akia Harrison and Octavia Hickson each had 12 points. Then she got her first win by beating Tennessee Wesleyan by a score of 54-41. to Hickson had 17 points. Asia Harper, 11 points. Hannah Goolsby, 11 boards. Eight boards, excuse me. They host UNC Greensboro Thursday at 5.30 and MTSU Saturday at 6.00. Golden Eagle men's cross-country team finished 11th at the NCAA South Regional. Gilbert Boyd, again, was impressive with an 11th place finish, but unfortunately did not qualify for the NCAA championships. Michaela Rennick led the women's team to a 21st place finish. The men's basketball team lost to Georgia Tech 70-55. Michaela Henry had 15 points. And then they lost to Central Michigan 86-74. Aleska Hugovich had 25 points. They host Alabama at A&M Thursday at 7.30. Sam Houston State Sunday at 2.00. Of course, the Regions Bank Athletes of the Week, Gilbert Boyd, Nick Madonia for his record-setting field goal, and Michaela Rennick. Coach Satterfield, before I send it back down to, to Dylan, great job this season. So proud of you and your student athletes and your coaching staff. Looking forward to a big win on Saturday, going 5-3 and three in the OVC, third place finish. Back down to you, Dylan. Well, Coach, that, that was nice to hear at the end. It's always when your boss says that. Especially when your boss gives you a little you know, vote of confidence, it makes you feel a little bit safer. There you go. Well, Tennessee Tech, they're going to play Murray State this week. Let's preview that matchup. It's time for this week's opponent as brought to you by the Golden Eagle Golf Club. Coach, we've talked about it earlier in the show, the, the standings, everything. This will be a battle for third place and kind of the upper echelon of the OVC against this Murray State team. No question. And like a lot of these games this year, like the defensive coordinator, Chris Boone, and I worked together for three and a half years at Martin. Uh, we've known each other forever, so we're very familiar. We played each other when he was at Jacksonville and I was at Chattanooga. So this is one of those games where everybody knows everybody, and it's going to be, it's going to be pretty intense. But, uh, yeah, they, they got a great team. they got a great quarterback. they got some great receivers. They make you defend the whole field. They play with the tempo. Uh, you know, if it becomes a scoring contest, I, I, that, that scares me. We don't want that. We've got to make it a physical game and take care of the football. When you look at Murray, they've, they've created 20 – turnovers they've taken the ball away 20 times wow. in conference play and uh, they've only turned it over seven times so they're plus 13 in the conference uh, in conference games so you want to know why they're having such a successful season that's it and I think you know we got to continue to score touchdowns in the red zone at a high rate like we're doing and our defense showed again the other night stopping Tennessee State and you know when they would get down in the red zone into the goal line and holding them to field goal attempts so should be a great game. And when you talk about Murray State, as we've seen in these highlights, which are two years ago when the Golden Eagles won a game in overtime in Cookville, that man right there, Katie Humphreys, he's one of the OVC's all-time best quarterbacks. He's third in t passing touchdowns in the conference all-time with 72 and over 10,000 yards passing. That is good enough for second in the OVC list. Coach, how do you go up against a guy like Katie Humphreys? You have to contain them. You know, it's a lot like last week. You gotta, you can't really rush them because he can kill you with his feet and off schedule plays, and he can extend plays. So you kind of got to mush rush, control the edges on them, and then just play great. You know, our our guys played a great defense in the secondary the other night because they just kept everything in front of them, and uh, that's what we have to do this weekend. Because if we don't, it could be a long night. Well, it was a thrilling game two years ago. It was a thrilling game last year. Despite being out gained 500-something yards to 300-something yards, Tennessee Tech would win in Murray 31-29. to This Saturday's game, of course, it's the final game of the season. And Coach, it's also senior day. I know that's always a marquee event. No question. And for these seniors uh, that I hold so dear, uh, you know, I hate that we didn't win a ring for them. Uh, but they have, they have bought into the process. They've bought into our, you know, our standards of our organization, and they've helped lay the foundation. So hopefully they can finish up strong, and you know, we keep pressing them to solidify their legacies. And uh, I think that they will. But we got some really, really, really great seniors that have done so much for our program this year. So good luck on Saturday. And one more time, one more show, same time, same place next week. I can't wait. Hopefully I'm smiling. All right.
Well, that'll be it for Coach Satterfield. Here's how you can follow the game. Once it gets 1.30 kickoff from Tucker Stadium, Senior Day, the game will be on TV, WCTE. It'll be on the radio, 98.5 KISS FM. And, of course, you can read all about it in the Cookville Herald Citizen. That's going to do it for this week's Marcus Satterfield Show. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.